It's been six weeks since the Acropolis Rally in Greece, and all the teams contesting the FIA World Rally Championship have been busy. Subaru sent two cars to the China Rally for Colin McRae and Kenneth Erickson, who dominated the event, finishing first and second. McRae also found the time to get married. For the other teams, their mid-season break was spent in development, not competition. Phil, after Greece, what sort of work have you been doing over the last six weeks? Well, we did a very good test in uh, Finland, uh, primarily for Thousand Lakes, but also for here, which uh, gave us some uh, good improvements on suspension, transmission, engine, and so on. Others, too, were testing. Toyota has spent months secretly perfecting the replacement for the Celica, and this was the impressive backdrop as the result was finally revealed to the world's press. The new Corolla will spearhead the company's assault on the 1998 series, and the car's immaculate preparation hints at what's to come next year. Advanced technology plays a crucial role. We'll take a closer look when the car competes in Finland. For this particular event we're using the sequential gearbox for the first time. We weren't planning to use this until um, Thousand Lakes, but the testings proved to be satisfactory and both drivers have proclaimed themselves very happy with it. So um, we've taken the gamble and we're using it here for the first time. The six week break over, it was time to see if all the development work had paid off. This, the first stage, might only have been a two-kilometer spectator special, but it set the scene for a further three days of grueling competition. The heavy rain and deep mud ensured that it caught out the overconfident. Round 9 of the World Rally Championship saw the cars, the drivers and the teams leave the European summer behind and journey to the southernmost country the series visits, New Zealand. Run entirely on the country's North Island, the Rally New Zealand is held at the beginning of August, just as winter begins to give way to spring. Cloudy skies mean heavy rain, but if the sun shines it's also bitterly cold. A new format this year meant that the cars returned each night to the host city, Auckland, the city of sales. And apart from the first stage in Manukau, the remainder of leg one was run to the north of Auckland. Championship leader Tommy Mackinnon's Mitsubishi Lancer was first into the forests. The Subaru Impreza of Colin McRae had been quickest around the Manukau stage the previous day and was also fastest on stage two. An early lead, six seconds, but another 22 stages remained. Mackinnon was just four seconds slower than McRae through the stage, but the pair looked to be in a different league. Everyone else was at least 30 seconds slower. Mackinnon's teammate was Richard Burns, who won the event last year. He was third after stage two. Uh, the roads are just very, very good for a driver. They're pretty undamaging for the car, so um, it's really, it's completely down to us. We push as hard as we can uh, without making a mistake, hopefully. Um, very, very twisty, nice flying stages. Fast, spectacular stages, too. Fords won two in Greece, and the new sequential gearbox meant that the team came to New Zealand full of confidence. Science demonstrating the simple push-pull gear change, which was taking a little getting used to. He and co-driver Lewis Moyer were fourth after stage two, 36 seconds behind the charging McRae. Despite McRae's lead, all was not well at Subaru. Kenneth Erickson had tackled the previous day's spectator stage at Manukau without fourth gear. The team had hoped to fix the problem at the day's first service area, but couldn't, the cause remaining a mystery. We don't know yet. Uh, we don't really have time to look at it now. So I had to, to live without the four skill on the first two stages. And then, then maybe we'll change the finger house. And then, then it maybe, hopefully, can be OK after the, the first two stages this morning. Night sleep. No collector after stage three did the trick. On the twisty gravel stages, fourth gear was invaluable. Vital seconds were ticking away as Kenneth was forced to change directly from third to fifth and back again. This morning was a difficult decision because uh, we could have changed it this morning, but we would have taken about one and a half minutes penalty, which is quite a lot starting the rally. Uh, but it was risky not to do it because it could have damaged 
all the other gears. He could have damaged second, fourth, and sixth. But uh, it turned out to be the right decision. He came in, didn't damage second and sixth. We've changed the selector mechanism now, and we hope it's going to be okay now. We'll see. After the second stage, Ericsson was fifth. The first leg was wet, but if the conditions bothered the drivers, some of the more ingenious spectators hardly seemed to notice. In sixth place was Juha Kankinen, who won in New Zealand in 1986 on the way to the first of four world championships. Team leader Sainz has won the event on no fewer than three occasions, so Ford started the rally with the most successful driver lineup. Probably these are the best driving roads, you know, in the world because they are very good surface and floating and, and nice fast. Some fast, some slow, but good roads. Mackinnon set the fastest time on stage three to close the gap on McRae to five seconds. If we go on board with Tommy on stage four, it's obvious that he's driving right on the limit. Any slight error is swiftly punished. Accident in sixth gear at over 160 kilometers an hour destroyed the car, and so the rally ended for Mackinnon and his co-driver Seppo Haryana there and then. Surprisingly, perhaps considering the damage to the car, both the Finns were fairly philosophical about the crash. To my knowledge, it was uh, this uh, sort of a wrong camber on the road made a trick on uh, entry to the this quite easy left one, and and so we went unplanned too much sideways and obviously what I saw from the marks the sump card you know hit into the mud and, and that sort of a turned the car over and then we did I don't know how many rounds but <laughs> we survived anyway I don't understand what what is wrong with this rally it's so nice to drive I like these dates it's it's very much like a thousand legs and uh, it's so enjoyable rally that it's no luck, it's no luck, that's it. <laughs> With Mackinnon out, McRae's lead after stage four had grown to 55 seconds. No one, it seemed, could touch him. Colin went on to set the fastest time on five of the first eight stages and looked to be on course for his fourth victory on the Rally New Zealand. Victory would also mean 10 World Championship points and place him on level terms with Mackinnon with five rounds of the series remaining. On stage nine, it all looked to be going well. Into six left, minus cut. Into four right, minus Titans. Into two left, plus Titans. Yeah, okay. Into six right. McRae's won twice so far this year, but this was his fourth retirement. Like Tommy, Colin would take no points from the longest journey of the year. Cam belt tensioner just broke, just uh, exiting that right hander there. So, uh, at the end of the day, that's it. Our championship started here, but maybe it ends here, we don't know. Well, it looked like it was going to be fairly plain sailing in 10 points, which at this point in the championship is very, very important to us. Just a thousand lakes to the next one, Tommy's probably going to win there, and then it just makes it harder towards the end of the year. And it's an awful long way to come, isn't it, to go out on the first day? It certainly is. But Mackinnon and McRae weren't the event's first casualties. An excursion through a fence on only the second stage of the rally had left the Seat Ibiza of Finland's Harry Rovampera a long way from the road. Australia's Wayne Bell didn't even make it that far. His new Hyundai Coupe kit car only completed one stage. In the World Cup for two-litre cars, Oriol Gomez and the sole surviving Seat Ibiza led at the end of the first leg. Despite the seemingly unlikely challenge of Japan's Nobuhiro Tajima, or Monster Tajima as he's better known, driving the kit car version of Suzuki's Baleno Estate. Group N was led by Gustavo Treyes, driving his Evolution 3 Mitsubishi Lancer for the last time. His new Evolution 4 will contest the Rally of Finland. As the first day drew to a close, the top six cars were separated by a little under five minutes. Neil Bates was sixth in the Toyota Celica soon to be replaced by one of the new Corolla World Rally cars.
Nearly two minutes ahead of the Australian Bates was the leading New Zealander, Possum Bourne. National pride meant that this battle captured the attention of the spectators as much as the one between the leaders. With Mackinnon gone, Richard Burns had the undivided attention of the Mitsubishi mechanics. It was just as well. He damaged the transmission on his charisma and the resulting lost two minutes had dropped him from second to fourth. The part was changed at the day's final service area, but Richard was understandably frustrated. It's very tricky. You have to be very careful as soon as you put your foot on the accelerator, the car tries to spin because it only has three wheels driving. So, uh, well, you have to judge a little bit differently from driving normally, obviously, and uh, makes braking less effective, uh, makes it very easy to spin the car. Yuha Kankinen and co-driver Yuha Repo were third, their escort setting the quickest time on the last stage of the day. Easy right and crest to medium right and long medium left. Not only did Kankinen have the sequential gearbox, but a specially designed vertical handbrake as well, the smaller lever behind the gear shift. Pulling back changes up the gearbox, pushing forward changes down. Kenneth Erickson also set the fastest time on one of the day stages. His gearbox problems were now behind him, and the Subaru was in second place. But the rally leader was Carlos Sainz. Now that the early pace setters, McRae and Mackinnon, had both retired, Sainz could finally start to prove that the result in Greece hadn't been a one-off. When the rally started this morning, um, Tommy and uh, Colin were very, very quick. And I think, uh, to be fair to our, both our drivers, it's taken a little bit longer to get used to the sequential gearbox than, uh, than we envisaged. Um, but having said that, both of them now seem to be going very competitively, and it's, it's a great shame that those two are not here to see, uh, to see actually how competitive we are. You're fairly close to Carlos. Do you think you can catch him? That's my target. I will go uh, fight every stage. I mean, I really wanted to catch him and win this rally, but still a long way to go, and, uh, but it's still very open. The car is fantastic. The handling of the car is very good. I'm sure it's, it's the best. The, the gearbox, new gearbox is very good, and really, at the moment, I'm enjoying very much driving the new gearbox. It's only, you know, we have to keep working a little bit in the engine. But tomorrow it must be 100% driving. Tomorrow is 100% and also it is quite twisty stages. We have to see, and, but the car is handling well, so we will see. Just 22 seconds were all that separated Sainz and Ericsson, with Kankin and a further 50 seconds adrift. Burns must have been cursing his transmission problems, without which he'd have been challenging Sainz. ...at the end of leg one. The tallest structure in the southern hemisphere, the Sky Tower was welcomed with a spectacular fireworks celebration, which lit up the night sky. The second leg's eight stages lay to the southeast of Auckland, and many drivers described them as almost in another country. The weather had completely changed too. Gone with the clouds and heavy rain of the previous few days to be replaced by spring sunshine. One other change up its sleeve. Sainz, now running first on the road, quickly discovered that the loose gravel provided about as much grip as running on ball bearings. He was now at a disadvantage, effectively sweeping a path through for the others. Stage 11, the longest of the entire rally at over 47 kilometers, saw him lose 39 seconds and the lead. <laughs> Ericsson set the fastest time on stage 11 and grabbed the lead for the first time. Tillvänster 5 plus 40, höger 3 minus kort. Tillvänster 2 plus kort, not inside, 20. Kankanen didn't suffer quite as much as his teammate, but he also lost about 20 seconds to the charging Ericsson.
Richard Burns was also quicker than Sainz through the stage, one of the longest in the World Championship. Despite losing time to Ericsson, the young Englishman's proving that he can compete on equal terms with the best in the world. That one stage saw Ericsson turn a 22-second disadvantage into a 17-second lead. Kankinen and Burns were both quicker than Sainz. By the time the leaders reached the next service halt, Kenneth was fairly cautious. Still is very open. I'm sure Carlos will come back and uh, I will push, continue to push hard to see what comes out of it. But as I said, I'm feeling confident at the moment. So do you think the next two or three stages could be crucial to the whole rally? No, every stage is important, even the last stage. So I mean, I take stage by stage and try to do my best and, and then uh, we see what comes out of it. Sainz blamed the time loss on a poor tyre choice for the first stage. Yet, as the day wore on, he would only share the fastest time on two of the remaining seven stages. Running first was a definite disadvantage, but there was nothing he could do. It was Kankinen's turn to set the quickest time on stage 12, which marked the halfway point of the rally. The Finn looked to be more than happy with third place. But the performance of leg two came from Richard Burns, his Mitsubishi now running perfectly once again. He set the fastest time on four of the eight stages, gaining over 30 seconds on the leading trio. We've been pushing hard on all, all of them, but the last two, uh, it's helped being fourth on the road because the road's cleaning with uh, the first few cars, uh, just, uh, just pushing the, the small stones away a bit. So uh, I'm just making the most of it. Ericsson make a rare mistake. He chose a tyre compound which was too soft. A handful of seconds were lost, but the lead was safe. That's how it would stay, with Kenneth sharing fastest time with Sainz on stages 16 and 17. Behind the struggle at the head of the leaderboard, by the end of leg two, Uruguay's Gustavo Treyes had opened up a lead of over two minutes in Group N. The Southern Hemisphere battle was still going strong. Neil Bates remained in sixth place. But New Zealand still held the advantage. Possum Bourne was now over four minutes ahead of Bates in fifth place. Burns was still fourth, but the day's performance underlined his choice as Mitsubishi's second driver on gravel events. Third was Kankinen, drafted into the team for Argentina to replace Armin Schwartz. It was difficult to believe that this was still only his third event for the Ford team. Sainz, meanwhile, had closed the gap on Ericsson slightly, but was still second. At least he wouldn't have to run first on the road on the final leg. Ericsson's lead was now down to just eight seconds, with Kankinen a further 24 seconds behind Sainz. A classic battle lay ahead on the final day. Perfect flying weather too for rally spectating, New Zealand style. But wherever the World Championship goes, some things never change. Ericsson is now faced with the same handicap as Sainz had been. A spin on the very first of the day's six stages meant that third fastest was the best Kenneth and his co-driver Stefan Parmander could manage. Shoot you. Advanced at four meters. Half long. Not in. Advanced at five the Subaru lost 13 seconds on the one stage. Had the spin cost the Swedes the lead? For the second time in almost exactly 24 hours, the opening stage of the day looked to prove decisive. Sainz, although he didn't yet know it, was perfectly placed to benefit. Could he now be on the way to Ford's second win in a row? <laughs> The collision with one of New Zealand's 60 million sheep brought back memories of Mackinnon's horrendous accident with a cow in Corsica. Yet Sainz was at least able to struggle on, without brakes and with damage to the bodywork, engine and suspension. At the next service area, his mechanics were faced with a grim task. So, 
You hit the sheep on a very fast section. Yes, very fast after a crest, 180 kilometers per hour, something like that. Nothing you can do, is it? No. How bad does it look in there? Well, it's not finished for sure, but I think it, they can repair. But his mechanics were up against the clock. 20 minutes were all that were allowed before time penalties began, and they had a lot to do. The anxious looks and sights blowing the horn to try and speed up the work served only to increase the tension. Great sigh of relief. Have you got him out on time? Yeah, no problems. I mean, the boys have done a fantastic job here. The, the extent of the damage was the left-hand front shock absorber, the brakes, radiator, intercooler, uh, some guard and obviously the body damage that you could see. As Sainz set off to try and make up the 26 seconds he lost to Ericsson, another Spaniard could celebrate. Oriol Gomez won Formula 2 for Seat. <laughs> Gustavo Treyes once again won the class for production cars. He now only needs to finish second in class in Finland to retain his Group N world title. Neil Bates and co-driver Coral Taylor finished sixth in the Toyota, scoring one world championship point. But to the delight of the local spectators, Possum Bourne and Craig Vincent brought their Subaru home in fifth place. Richard Burns and Robert Reed were fourth for Mitsubishi, only too aware that the problems of day one had cost them any chance of their first world championship victory. The two Yuhas, Kankunen and Repo, finished third. Two podium finishes in as many events and an increasing confidence within the Ford team. When the series travels to Finland at the end of August, Tommy Mackinnon may well not have things all his own way. Confirmation of the result. Ericsson the winner by 13 seconds from Seitz, with Kankunen another six seconds behind and Burns and Bourne rounding off the top five places. The result in New Zealand changes the position in the World Drivers' Championship. Mackinnon still leads after his three victories, but Sainz is now second ahead of McRae and Ericsson is fourth, now with a slim chance of taking the title with 50 points still available from the five remaining rounds. In the series for manufacturers, no change in the leader. Subaru extending their advantage, but Mitsubishi and Ford are now separated by just a single point. Next, a return to Europe for the Rally of Finland, where Tommy Mackinnon will start as favourite to repeat his victory of last year.